Okay, so now we're going to uh, start deriving the equation for simple harmonic motion. But we're going to start off by using the circular motion uh, to get the equation. Um, now, uh, there are three, actually, three cases uh, that you have to know the equations for. Uh, you have to know uh, the, the set of equations if, you, if your simple harmonic motion starts from the middle, all right, and then uh, starts to go up or your, your simple harmonic motion starts from the top and then goes down, all right? or the third one, if it starts from the bottom and going up. So the, the problem with a simple harmonic motion is that the displacement velocity and acceleration, uh, they will vary with time. So at different times, you have different displacement velocity and acceleration. So we need to find out their equations. Right, uh, so how is it uh, related to your uh, circular motion? Um, Imagine you have this uh, turntable here which you stick a pen. So what will happen is uh, as the pen goes round and round, all right, um, you will be able to get a simple harmonic motion if you were to shine a light from the side. So let's imagine that your pen is going round and round so, and we were to project um, the shadow on a screen. So you'll notice that, let me just mark the middle first. So this is the middle point. So the shadow here uh, at P were, uh, the shadow of the pen at P will be formed here on the screen. So I'm going to show that shadow here. So what it will be your displacement uh, in your simple harmonic motion? Do you realize that as this uh, pen goes one round, the shadow actually goes one oscillation? All right. So you see, uh, if it starts let's say from the middle, okay, it starts from the equilibrium. So your shadow will be here. It goes up to here. Your shadow goes up to the highest point. And then the pen goes back down here, the shadow comes back here. When the pen goes down, then the shadow goes to the lowest point. And finally, when the pen returns to the equilibrium, the shadow also returns to the equilibrium. So it's one complete oscillation for one complete revolution. Now, um, to derive the equation, uh, we have to uh, measure the displacement of the shadow uh, from the equilibrium position, right? So displacement is always measured from the equilibrium position, right? Um, so if I were to uh, show this on the circle here, <coughs> this x would be here, and since this is theta, this is also theta, and this is r. So what will what will the equation be? So if let's say I write sine theta, all right. So do you realize that sine theta, which gives me uh, opposite over hypotenuse, will give me x over r. So you get x equals to r sine theta. Now, uh, the r is actually the radius of the circle here, which is also the radius circle here. But do you realize, if let's say the pen moves all the way up here, this is your r, that you'll actually form a shadow here. Which means to say, this uh, value of r here will actually give you the amplitude of your simple harmonic motion, which is x0. So therefore, we can change the r to x0. And uh, do you also see that um, theta... Here is your angular displacement because it's starting from here and you're going up. So remember we're doing for the case, we're starting from the middle and going up. So theta is angular displacement and if you learn in circular motion, which is equals to omega t, your angular velocity times time. Alright, so you get the equation for x in terms of t if you're starting from the middle. So what kind of graph will you get? The graph that you will get uh, as you look at the equation here of x versus t, you notice that this equation is a sine function. So therefore, you're definitely going to get a sine graph. Now, let's say you wanted to get this equation, uh, but you didn't want to use circular motion. You can also use a shortcut to help you remember. Uh, the shortcut is like this. Remember that uh, at t is 0, you're starting from the middle, and then you are going to move up. So if I were to ask you to plot the graph of x versus t, you say, all right, t is 0, x is 0. So after that, you will move up. So therefore, from t equals to 0, uh, x equals to 0, your x will move up. So if it moves up, then you continue. This will give you a sine graph. So if it's a sine graph, this your equation for x must be a sine function. So that's a shortcut. Now, there are also uh, two more uh, cases starting from the highest point as well as starting from the uh, lowest point. So we're going to examine it now. Okay, now for the second case, uh, we are still going to use uh, the screen here. Alright, but this time, we're going to assume that the pen starts from the top here and then goes all the way around to this point. So now, the angular displacement, let's call it a different symbol. Let's call it alpha. 
Alright, uh, so once again, we recognize that the, the shadow at the highest point will correspond to here, right? So when the shadow is highest point, it is starting from here. And then later on, it will actually move down to here. So which will produce a shadow at this point, alright? So this is the shadow that comes from here. Now, once again, uh, let's mark the middle. So this is the middle. And uh, now, if, your ob if the pen actually moves from here to here, uh, we don't uh, measure the displacement from the starting point. Uh, in a simple harmonic motion, the, the, your displacement is always defined as a displacement from the equilibrium position. So which means to say you will still have to measure the displacement from here, from the middle. Let's call this X. So if I were to draw a triangle now, alright, so this will be your X here, and this will be your R here. Alright, and if you were to write down the formula, now you will get cos alpha, Right, so cos alpha will be adjacent over hypotenuse. So you'll get cos alpha equals to x over r. So x equals to r cos alpha. And I was mentioning uh, in the previous slide, your r here, which is the uh, which is also the r here, is actually your x naught, right? Your amplitude. So we can convert it into x naught. And the uh, alpha, which is your angular displacement from here to here will also be given as omega t. So what graph will you get? Uh, you're going to get, uh, according to your equation, the x versus t graph will be a cos graph. All right. So uh, this graph is also very logical, and you can actually get this graph by common sense. If you're starting from the highest point at t0, so at t0, you're starting from the highest point, and then you're going to go down. So from the highest point, you go down and you continue. So you're going to get a cos function, uh, so that's for your equation for x will be a cos function as well. For the third and final case, we are going to start from the lowest point and then we are going up. All right. So if once again I draw the um, screen, you will notice that uh, the shadow uh, of the pen of here at here will give will produce a shadow here. So we're going to draw the shadow here, and then once the pen actually moves up to here, and then the shadow will form uh, here. And uh, once again, we mark the middle point. Now, always remember in a simple harmonic motion, uh, displacement is always measured from the equilibrium. So it's still measured from here, not from the starting point. Huh? So we just because it starts from the lowest point, it doesn't mean x is measured from the lowest point. x is still measured from the middle. Right, uh, so if I were to draw a triangle now, all right, so this will be a triangle here. So this value, okay, which is x, will be here, x here and this will be a radius r and let's call the angle that you turn which is uh, from here to here so this angle let's call it beta so you'll notice that if you were to write the equation you will get cos beta equals to negative x over r so why do i put a negative there it's because in simple harmonic motion just like um all types of motion uh, and when we're considering displacement which is actually a vector we need, we need to look at the direction and the sign convention so in this case we are we are going to take the sign convention as upwards as positive upwards as positive all right so therefore any displacement uh, above the equilibrium is positive any displacement below the equilibrium will be negative so since this since this this displacement is below the equilibrium so i'm going to call it as negative x so my equation will be uh, x equals to negative r uh, cos beta. And uh, once again, the r, uh, which is uh, here, the radius here, is also your amplitude, all right? Or your r here is your actually your amplitude. So I'll change it to x naught. And uh, the beta, which is your angular displacement uh, from here to here, uh, angular displacement, is also equals to your angular velocity times time. So you get the equation of negative cos. So what graph uh, will you obtain? Uh, you will actually get uh, x versus t graph, which is a negative cos function. So the graph will be a negative cos function. And we actually can get this graph um, from um, a bit of common sense. Uh, and uh, from the graph, you can actually get the equation as well if you don't want to derive it from circular motion or if it is not required. So if you use a bit of common sense, we understand that at t0, you're starting from the lowest point. So if you're asked to plot the xt graph, you must start at the lowest point at t0. Then immediately you'll go up, so immediately the graph will go up. So if you continue, you'll notice you get a negative cos uh, graph, so your equation will be a negative cos equation as well. 
Alright, so these are the three cases, and you'll notice that for all these three cases, the equations for x versus t are all different. So you must remember when, uh, uh, when to use which equation. So as a summary, if it starts from the middle and it goes up, all right, or if we simple harmonic motion starts from the middle going up, then it's a sine uh, equation. Uh, and if it starts from the highest point and goes down, or from the highest point it goes down, then you must use a cos uh, equation. And if it starts from the lowest point it goes up, then we start from the lowest point it goes up, then you'll be a negative cos equation. So make sure you don't uh, use the wrong equations. Okay, so now uh, we are going to uh, complete the derivation for all the remaining formulas, which is for velocity and acceleration. So remember, we have uh, three cases that we mentioned just now. If you start from the middle uh, and you move up, so it has a sine equation. X is equal sine is a sine equation. If you're starting from the highest point and you're moving down, you actually uh, get a cos equation. And then if you're starting from the lowest position moving up, you get a negative cos equation. Now, uh, just a reminder, if let's say you are supposed to, uh, if you can't remember the formula and you wanted to get the formula for this, you don't have to actually uh, start deriving it from circular motion. Just use the technique uh, which I, we talk about. That means just look at uh, how would you plot the graph for x versus t. That means if you start from the middle and you move up, so if I plot the x versus t, I'll start from the middle and move up and continue, I get a sine graph. I will get a sine graph, so therefore, uh, what I will have uh, is x equals to x dot sine omega t, which is a sine function. Now, uh, the next one, if I'm starting from the highest position and moving down, uh, if I were to plot the graph of x versus t, at t is 0, starting from the highest point, then move down, so I'll continue move down, so I'll get a cos graph, so therefore the equation must be in terms of cos. And lastly, if I start from the lowest point and move up, so I will plot the x versus t graph, starting from the lowest point going up, so if I continue, I realize I get a negative cost graph. So this must be a negative cost equation. Right, uh, now let's move on from there. Uh, if you wanted to get the formula for velocity, let's say for this case. So remember uh, in maths, uh, your velocity is the rate of change of displacement. So I basically have to de uh, differentiate this equation. Uh, so if I differentiate this, uh, I will differentiate the function here first, which is omega t. So I will I leave the x naught. So I leave the x naught and I differentiate the omega t. So I will get omega, so I get omega x naught. Then I differentiate the sine function, I get cos omega t. So therefore, my equation for v in terms of t is v equals to omega x naught cos omega t. So since this is a cos function, my v versus t must be a cos equation. Now, if you don't have the equation, we can also straight away transfer the graph from here to here because we know that v is dx dt, so differentiating this equation. So since this is a sine graph, differentiate sine, get a cos graph, right? So there's a shortcut. Anyway, um, the next equation here, uh, which I'm going to put an asterisk uh, next to it, all right, and also these two uh, asterisks. Now, I'll tell you later why I put asterisks, but let me just tell you how to uh, use this equation. Now, you don't have to uh, derive this because this equation is given in your data booklet. But what is the difference between this equation and the one that we just uh, derived? This bottom equation here uh, is actually uh, the equation for velocity in terms of displacement, whereas the equation that we derived was velocity in terms of time. Meaning to say, if you wanted to find the velocity at a different time, then we use this. If you wanted to find the velocity when you're given a displacement, then we use this. Now, the third one we actually can get from the here or here. That means the maximum velocity we can get from either one of these uh, equations. Now, if you're using this equation, V equals omega x dot cos omega t, do you remember that um, the maximum value for cos, uh, cos graph is actually... Uh, 1, right? So if the maximum value is 1, then your V max will be omega x naught here. Or if you were to consider this equation, uh, when will you, uh, or rather at which point do you get maximum velocity? Remember we say at the equilibrium position. So your x will substitute as 0. So then you get V equals to omega square root x naught squared. So square root x naught squared, you get x naught. So V equals to omega x naught. Right. Um, what about acceleration now? So if you want to get acceleration, you have to differentiate this velocity in terms of time because a is dv dt. So once again, we keep the omega x naught because it's a constant. Differentiate inside here, you get omega. So omega times omega x naught get omega squared x naught. Alright. And then differentiate cos, you get negative sine. So you get negative omega squared. 
x dot sine omega t. So since this is a sine function, the graph that you're going to get is a negative sine graph. So once again, you look at this graph, to get acceleration differentiate cost, you get negative sine. Now, um, then do you realize that x dot sine omega t here uh, looks a bit familiar because it came from here. Can you see x dot sine omega t and x dot sine omega t? So the x dot sine omega t here I can replace with x. So I get negative omega squared x. Now, the th last one, which is maximum acceleration, I can also get um, from either one of these two equations. Because if I take from here, your maximum value for sine graph is 1. So your maximum acceleration will be A equals to omega squared x naught. Now, you don't have to put a negative there because maximum means the magnitude only. Now, if you take from here, then uh, when do you get maximum acceleration? When your x is at the amplitude position. So your x is x naught and you get a maximum acceleration. Right, so in all simple harmonic motion, just a reminder, your omega and your x naughts are constant, right? So it, it doesn't change. For a particular simple harmonic motion, it's considered to be the same. What we have to substitute is either the t or the x, right? Or the t or the x. Okay, so uh, once again, I'm going to asterisk these uh, last two equations. So why there are asterisks are uh, these four equations? Uh, these four equations actually um, is very useful because these four equations will be the same for all the remaining two cases. That means starting highest point, starting lowest point, the V in terms of X and maximum velocity, A in terms of X and maximum acceleration are all the same. Now why are they the same? Uh, it's because of the fact that uh, we always measure displacement from the equilibrium position regardless of where we start. So whether we start from middle or highest or lowest, we are still measuring the displacement from the middle. So all equations in terms of displacement will always be the same. All right? And uh, maximum values for velocity and acceleration will always be the same as well. So these four equations, 1, 2, and 3, 4, you can use freely regardless of where you start from. But uh, if uh, the graph starts from different positions, uh, then you have to be careful about the x in terms of t, v in terms of t, and a in terms of t, because you'll notice that they'll be all different. All right. So how to get the remaining two uh, sets of equations here? So similar way. So if I start from x equals x not cos omega t, to get v, I've got to differentiate this. If I differentiate this, I get negative omega x not sine omega t. Alright, and if I do get A, I differentiate this again, so I get negative omega squared x naught cos omega t. So this equation is a negative sine graph, so this is a negative sine graph. This is equation is a negative cos graph, so the equa the graph is actually a negative cos graph. Now, um, if you uh, want to differentiate the graph straight away, also can. Uh, cos, differentiate cos, you get negative sine. Negative sine, differentiate, get negative cos. Right, so you can also change the graphs without using the equation. Alright, the last case here, the last case here is starting from uh, the lowest point. So remember, it's negative x naught cos omega t. So for the velocity, differentiate this, you differentiate this, you get this, omega x naught sine omega t. So this will be a sine function, positive sine function. Now you're going to get a, you differentiate your v with respect to t. You differentiate this, you get omega squared x naught cos omega t, which is a positive cos function. So your graph is a positive cos graph. Now the other equations here, the one I say is common, you don't have to worry, you don't have to derive, just use them straight away. It's the same for all the cases. Right? So make sure you know how to use the equations and uh, pay attention to where it starts from if you need to find uh, or use the equations for x, v or a in terms of t only. If it's finding x, oh, sorry, if it's finding v in terms of x or a in terms of x or maximum velocity, maximum acceleration, then you don't have to worry where it starts from. Right, it's the same general equation. Now, there's one more uh, thing uh, which I will explain in the next slide, which is the graph of v versus x and a versus x, which is the same for all three cases. Okay, how uh, how to plot the graph of v versus x and a versus x? I'm going to show you. Right now, remember the equation for v versus x was v equals to omega square root x naught squared minus x squared. Now, there's a positive negative there because. Uh, when your displacement is a certain point here or the certain value from the equilibrium, you could be either moving up or down. So that means the velocity could be positive or negative. That's why some of the uh, books have this uh, positive minus, uh, positive negative in front. But anyway, uh, how do you plot the graph of V versus X? Now, um, by looking at this equation, I think it's quite hard for us to predict what kind of graph we will get. So what we will do instead uh, is to use a bit of common sense and try to get the graph from looking at the motion. 
So uh, let's start from the middle here. Let's say the object is passing the middle. Remember when it's passing the middle and moving up, it will be moving up with the highest speed. But what is the displacement at the middle? So your displacement will be zero, right? So therefore, when the displacement here is zero, okay, which is here, so displacement is zero. So your, your velocity is the highest, which is positive omega x naught. So this is your first plot, all right? This is your first plot. Uh, then uh, when the object uh, goes up to the highest point, your displacement will be positive x naught, all right? Because its highest point is positive, uh, because upwards is positive. So positive x naught. So your um, point will be here, which is positive x naught here. So positive x naught, your velocity will be zero because at the highest point. So this is your second plot. So then uh, when it um, comes uh, back down again, let's say it comes back down again past the middle. So at the middle here, what is your displacement? Once again, is zero. But what is your velocity? Maximum but downward. So it's uh, negative omega x naught, which is actually now here. So displacement zero, but your velocity is negative omega x naught. So it's your third point here. Okay, so now let's look at the fourth point, uh, which is uh, actually here. Let's say the uh, mass has come down all the way to the lowest point. All right, so at this lowest point, the displacement will be uh, negative x naught, but it will also have a zero velocity. So therefore, your fourth point will be uh, here. Will be here. Okay. So after that, uh, this uh, mass will go back to the equilibrium. So that means uh, the displacement is zero, right? Displacement zero, but the maximum velocity upwards again. So you will notice that it will form an elliptical graph. Now this graph uh, of V versus X is uh, common for all the three situations that we discussed, whether it's starting from the middle or starting from the highest point or starting from the lowest point, because any graph in terms of X will also be the same. So next, let's let's talk about plotting a graph of uh, A versus X. So to plot the graph of A versus X, we use the equation for A uh, in terms of X, which is A equals to negative omega squared X. So if you compare with a straight line equation Y equals to MX plus C, you will notice that the A is your y-axis, the x is the x-axis. So therefore, the gradient will be negative omega squared. And since omega is a constant, so in other words, your gradient is a negative constant. And since your y-intercept here has nothing, so it means that it's a negative gradient passing through the origin. So this graph, uh, because it's A versus X, is also the same for all three situations, whether you're starting from the highest point, or from the middle, or from the lowest point.